Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Sai, software engineer at Remitly, Xmeta. Today, I would like to talk about tri data structure. Two core reasons that I'm bringing up this topic. One, when I started my journey with algorithms, tri seems to be super overwhelming. And I want to share the point of view that helped me to master this topic. And second, I bombed a lot of interviews, including Amazon, Compass, and Pinterest. Interviewers would not only bring this topic during your design, during your uh, algorithms, but they might also get this during your system design rounds. And this actually helps. And if you're in the same shoes of me being overwhelmed on tries, and this might be for you, and let's get started. Okay, uh, let's start with a simple example. And what exactly is a try? Um, you can think try as a simple representation of a string, not anything. Um, not anything other than that. For example, let's take um, these four strings, right? And you want to represent it. And one thing when I started my try journey that always confused me is, you know, the thing that you're seeing in the screen. You go to google.com and you sort of uh, ask about try data structure and you get this. And what exactly is the problem with this? It's not the representation, but when I think about it, my brain always would think about how can I implement it? You know, when you think about it, that's where the real confusion starts. And in my point of view, when the try hits in, all you have to see is representation of a hash map. So let me give a quick example. Let's say, let's assume we have these four uh, strings over here and, and, dad, and do. And let me make this picture a little smaller. Let me scroll my screen up. So I am actually, you know, um, pointing to this. So this is what you should sort of understand when the try hits in. It's nothing but a simple um, hash map with a key of a character and value of an object. That's it. As simple as that. So to sort of give you a better understanding, hey, you're saying a simple hash map, but how do you represent this? Uh, imagine you have and, and what you do is like, you, okay, you start with A and you take this structure and uh, keep the key as A and the value, just forget about all these internal parts. Just imagine the value as the simple, you know, the flower brackets, a map, it's an object. And then comes N, N is in the second level. So you're done with A, again, you go to N. So now think this as this simple object. So you'll have N and you'll create an object. So that would be N and you have this object. And last, you have D. Again, with D, you have to think a simple structure of this. So you have D and you have this object. And one caveat over here, since you're ending with A and D, and that's it, this is what you have. So as simple as that, I did same with all of these structures. Same with AND, I started with A, an object, and uh, N, an object, T, an object. Since the word is ending to represent it, it's like star and true. That's it. And this can be translated to this. Now, how can you combine this? That's where the real thing comes in. It's pretty simple. So while combining, so you can imagine these four characters. And what is my first character? I have A, I have A, I have T, and I have T. In hash map, you can only create the same key once, right? So if you take level one, so you have A and D and both are different characters and I just represented that, that's it. And on level two, I have N, A and O, three different characters. And this N is actually present inside A. So I just went inside A and I just created this object, which is nothing but this. I've created this at this level. Similarly for D, I have A and O. So I've created A and O and simple objects since the do is actually ending i've created this asterisk and true and when you do this level by level this is what you sort of get at the end and that's our try what actually makes changes is that this will make your thought process to think about a bunch of hash maps as simple as that and this complicates your thought process towards implementation. So this actually changed my point of view and uh, it helped me on how to construct the try data structure. Okay, so now uh, let's get into the most uh, important question. Hey, how do we decide um, we should use a try data structure? What is a guiding factor? To be honest, 
one thing that I always look up to, not only for the uh, for try as a topic, but for any data structure is a time and space complexity. So let's understand how to compute the time and space. And this will help you and you'll be thankful for that. So let's imagine I have three strings, Psi, Sam, and Ann. And how do you store this? Because try is all about string representation. What is the most easiest way to store this? I would go with, uh, take an empty array. So I'll go through each of these strings. So I would pick Psi and add Psi into your empty array. And this is your array. This is how your array would look. And for Sam, you'll add Sam into that array. So now you have Psi and Sam. And you take Ann and you would add that into array and you have Psi, Sam, and Ann. And what is the time complexity? Very straightforward. All you're doing is like you're going to each of these strings and adding it into an empty array. And you can use a simple for loop. So if you have W of words, the time complexity would be like order of W. And what would be space? Space is nothing but, hey, how many characters do I have? It's like nine. So how do we compute it? Uh, take the largest length because space is all about um, the largest character. So it's like um, three, uh, times three, nine, so word times L. So that would be your space complexity. Now, if you bring try data structure instead of array, let's see what would be your time and space. And how do you generate your try data structure? You will have an empty map similar to your array. And you'll start with S as your level one. Okay, just go ahead and add S into your object. And if you remember, this is what I'm saying, S and an empty object. And then you have A, A should be inside S. So on the next edition, you would take S and you would add A inside S. And this is how your data structure would look. And you have S A I. And since it is the, it is sort of ending your string, you'll sort of add asterisks and true. So this would be your uh, thing for S A I. Next, you'll go for S A M. And you know, the S and S both are at level zero. And you would say, hey, at this level, do I already have? Yes, it is. And since your hash map is similar to set, it will not accept duplicate characters. So you're done with that. And next you would go to A. So A is also present. So you'll not make any changes. And then you don't have M, you have only I. So what you do is like you would add your M and done. So if you see, you're going through each of the character at once and you're trying to take a look and look up in hash map is constant time operation. So all you need is like, you know, uh, go through, you know, each of the word and even that you are going through each of the character similar to space complexity over here. So the time over here is like order of words. Here is like order of words times length of each word. Next space. This is the tricky one. So you have to better understand this. And what, what is the space actually? So if you see the space over here is if you consider uh, Sai and Sam, um, probably the space is nothing but the depth of the maximum string. And let me tell you why it's depth of the maximum string. So over here, you have an empty string and you added S and then you added A. For example, let's say you're also having a, a string and, right? So you would say, you would see, hey, do I have A? No, I don't have A. So go ahead and add um, A at this level. So now you have to ask a question to yourself, just remove this. How many words a specific set we could have? Maximum of 26 characters, right? So any depth that we have, you only you only get to have like 26 characters. And now if you if you look into this data structure, if you look into this data structure, this level will have 26 characters maximum. This level will have 26 characters maximum. This level will have 26 characters maximum. So how many levels did we got? three levels. So the maximum time complexity would be here length of the maximum string because for example, you have Anna, you'll go like four levels deep. So it's like four times 26 and 26 is always constant. So this could be as simple as order of L. So if you see, you know, in terms of the time complexity, your array always wins over try data structure. But the question to ask, why do we choose try then if the normal array data structure is good at time complexity. That's the thing we should think about, and that will give you the real essence of dry data structure. Imagine you have this word called Zach, and they said that, hey, now if, uh, you have two different data structures. Now you can have this, you know, like the array, or you can have the dry data structure. Can you search for word Zach? 
this will give you like why try is super important. Let's say if I want to search Zach in the specific uh, strings, I could I, I need to go to each string and I need to say whether Sai is equivalent to Jack, no. Sam is equivalent to Jack, no. Anna is equivalent to Jack, no. And uh, you might think I have to match with each word, but here is the thing. Let's imagine uh, you, let's say you have uh, Z, A, C, that's it. And what you're going to do is like, you want to check whether this is a substring of, you know, any of these things, or you can have Z, A, C, or you can also have Z, A, C, K, S, Zax. And not, none of these things would be matched. So if you think one depth, one step inside, your Jack is not equivalent to Sai, your Jack is not equivalent to Sam, your Jack is not equivalent to Anna, but as it reaches Z, A, C, it says, okay, Z matches with Z, A also matches with A, C also matches with C, but we have K and we don't have K over here. So internally, what happens is that it will check with each of these strings with each individual character. So the search time for this using an array would become W times L. And now consider the try data structure. For try data structure, it's very easy. If you're looking for Zach, you would say, hey, my first character is Z. In case if Zach is part of my, you know, the three strings, I would have Z at level one. And searching if, if this specific, uh, you know, map has Z is a constant time operation because search and hash map is constant time. So it would say, no, I don't have Z. Let's assume instead of that, we are looking for a string called Sammy as A M M Y. And now what happens is that you look for S. Yes, I do have S. And then I go to one level deeper. I have A. Yes, I have A. But I don't have M O here, right? Or no, my bad. So you have M O here. And inside that M, I don't have one more M. So in worst case, you will just look for the length of this given string right so the the time complexity would be over, over here would be order of search word and this is why we would be choosing the try data structure right so the search would become much more easier it's just like length of the word or else you have to go through you know the entire uh, words and you have to see it so now if you combine let's say you are just given the words and uh, you want to provide the search operation. So probably let's say they have given you an array and you'd not construct an array and you want to do the search operation, it would be W L. And in our case, so we first want to construct try. So it's already W L plus the length of the search word in case if you want to do it from scratch. So that's the reason why I'm saying the way you choose is based on the time and space complexity, but this is to give an idea if you have a array, if you have a try data structure that's already pre-built. Your try always wins in terms of searches, assuming this length of the search word is less than total number of characters that you have in the search space. And uh, next, uh, let's jump on to some practical example and yeah, just move forward. Uh, take this popular example of uh, lead code. It's called uh, uh, search word two. I'm going to attach the link in the description. If you want to solve it, you can solve it in late code. So uh, see how try data structure could be uh, helpful. So you'll be given a grid of characters and you'll be given uh, words and you need to figure out, hey, what are the words that are actually present in this grid? And uh, here I'm not going to solve this. I'm going to talk through it uh, because we are having limited time on this video. Uh, so uh, if you want to solve this on, on a grid, to search any word, it would take like three to the power of L, take any word of length L. To search this, we have to apply DFS. Once again, like I'm not solving it, but imagine like it takes like three to the power of L time. And if you're not using try data structure for each word, let's say you take oath and you would say, hey, okay, this character starts with O, then start doing DFS to see if oath is actually present. In case if it is present over here, that's green. If H is not present over here, probably you'll go to the next cell and you'll, you'll again perform DFS on each cell. So the time complexity would be you have like W times L. That would be the total, you know, like the length of each, uh, like all the words. And uh, for each operation, you have to do a DFS, which will take like three to the power of L, at least like length of the maximum word. And for each word, you have to go to each character. Okay. Does O matches with this? Do DFS. In case we have one more O here, the O matches with O. So we'll again do DFS. So on each of the cell, 
we will try to see if each word is actually present so that would be w times l times m times n m is like number of rows n is like number of columns of this grid times for each dfs operation it's three to the power of l so this would be the time complexity let's say if we decided to construct a try and as you know the the way is like you take each word and you put it to a hash map and the time complexity uh, as you have seen over here not here my bad um yeah seen over here the time complexity will be somewhere around uh, uh, w times l it's like number of words time l and now once you have this try data structure the benefit is that you will start with this cell and you would say hey we matches with o and we have o and start doing dfs then you go to a and you have a then you see t you see t you see h then you have h and it says okay h ends with uh, the thing so we have the word auto here so it's like you can do a parallel traversal between a hash map and the, i mean the implementation might be much more harder but the intuition is that once you have this try data structure searching in like you know hash map is like order of n so this happens in parallel so the time complexity will be reduced from this to three to the power of l times m times n this w times l will be removed but you still need this w times l to construct this try data structure so your time complexity would be w times l plus 3 to the power of l times m times n so you can see the reduction so this is one use case of try data structure which i use and this is one of the popular problems and uh, once again we are not solving it but this is to get the real intuition on how try can actually help you and last but not least how it is used in system design is the only thing that's left Let's take yeah, uh, my Google Chrome as an example. If I search for LAM on each every word type, it is actually showing me the suggestion, right? It automatically shows up like top, probably top 10 suggestions. Yeah, it shows like top 10 suggestions. Let's say lead. It shows me the lead code. Now it has to do a few things. It has to search for these words. This search suggestions is one of the key things where the try data structures is actually used and that's one of the practical example. Imagine this as the uh, text box that you have seen on the Google Chrome. As the user is typing, he should get some suggestions. Uh, I'll keep it short. So in system design, you can either bring this from your database or you can get from that from your cache or you're from your server. So the way the try data structure would be used is uh, the representation that you're seeing over here your entire sort of you know the data that you're having on the database it can actually be cached into your server and this can be done by an async job and it's a, it's a different topic so the idea is if that's that get cached and as soon as the user has typed it search whether if there is an any word that's existing in the server with this character l if so just try to get all those words and you can send back to the user. So uh, it's a very minute thing. So probably to show how this can actually be used. So to recap everything, we just started uh, with what exactly is the implementation part and how changing your presentation from this to this will help you to decide then how do we decide which is actually better, whether it's you know the array or your try data structure and what are the caveats in, term, in terms of time and space. And this is super important, like the space and the time thing. And the key thing, how search can help you, then wind it with a real example of search, uh, word search too. So it's it's in the description below. You can solve this if you need it. And in real time, uh, what the interviewer would be expected in terms of design. And I know I haven't solved this question and I haven't dig deeper, but if you feel this can actually help you, please sort of, uh, comment and I can do more videos on that. And thanks for watching. And if you really enjoy the video, please like it and uh, uh, you can subscribe and also share this video. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching.